What do you do in your pre-shot routine? Welcome back everybody. In today's video I'd like to demonstrate different levels of pre-shot routines that I've seen in my lifetime that will hopefully show you what you might be missing in your pre-shot routine to help you have a more consistent game. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is aiming because that's in everybody's pre-shot routine. Now what I've seen with most beginning players though is that when they approach a shot they'll come and take a look at it have some idea of where they think they need to hit the ball in order for it to go into the pocket. But then they get down on the shot start to aim, and then shoot. And then when that happens, they wonder what they did wrong. Now the most common answer I get from beginning pool players when I ask them what went wrong is that they would say they didn't know the cue ball was going to do that. Well now that they do, then hopefully they can start to implement my next topic, and that's planning. Now there's many different levels of planning that can go into a pre-shot routine. And the first level I want to talk about is understanding where the cue ball goes after it makes contact with an object ball. Now I've got plenty of other videos on my channel that go more in depth on this, like my natural roll video, my bottom spin and top spin video. So when I look at this shot and see that the cue ball is about a foot away from the object ball, if I hit the cue ball in the center at about a medium speed, it will most likely slide into the object ball and therefore head off at a 90 degree angle in the opposite direction from the object ball and scratch like we saw. Now that I know that, I can plan with three different types of adjustments. The first one being, if I hit the cue ball a little bit softer, then it will have a chance to pick up forward roll before it makes contact with the object ball, therefore it rolls above the tangent line like this. Another adjustment that I can plan to make is to hit the cue ball with top spin so it's already rolling forward by the time it hits the object ball and therefore it'll go above the tangent line like this. Or another adjustment I can make is to hit the cue ball with bottom spin so that way I can draw the cue ball below the tangent line. So now I at least have one plan to avoid a scratch. Now unless you're shooting the last ball that you need to win a rack, like in a game of 8 ball or 9 ball, avoiding a scratch is not the only thing you should be planning for. You should also be planning on what ball you're going to shoot at next. Now what I've seen with most beginning players is they'll shoot their current shot, wait for the cue ball to stop moving, and then try to figure out what they're going to do next. What I'm suggesting is, if you're aware of where the cue ball is going to go or where you can make it go, then you can already have an idea of what ball you're going to shoot at after your current shot. And that's what allows you to build a run on the table. So if you look now, you can see that I've added the two ball at this end of the table here because that's going to be my next shot. And based on what I do know now, if I hit the cue ball softly into the one ball, I can avoid the scratch and make the one ball in the corner pocket, but my cue ball is going to be stuck somewhere up here, leaving me a long cut shot on the two ball or maybe even a bank shot. But now I also know that if I hit the cue ball with top spin, I can force the cue ball to come up here and hit this short rail and start heading down towards this end of the table just so I can have an easier shot on the two ball like this. And if I were to add a third ball on the table, I would want to do that same exact routine to go from the two ball to wherever the third ball might be on the pool table. Now I want to go more in depth on the aiming aspect of the pre-shot routine. Because I've been asked a couple of times, what exactly am I doing when I aim when it looks like most of my aiming is done when I'm down on the shot? And that's not exactly true. Now I'm primarily a ghost ball aimer. So before I even got down on the shot, I've already spotted where the center of the ghost ball is. 
and that allows me to do most of my aiming while I'm standing lining up the shot. Now if you've seen my form fundamentals video, you should be aware that when I line up a shot, I place my right foot behind the cue ball so that I can face the direction that I want to shoot. Now when I lay my cue down onto the table like I'm going to take a shot, I can already see from up here whether or not if I'm going to make the one ball, because that allows me to do something like this. That's what I mean by most of my aiming occurs while I'm standing. Now that doesn't mean that I don't do anything while I'm down on a shot. I'm not a perfect player and I can't always tell if I'm going to make the shot while I'm standing. So after I get done lining up everything from a standing position, when I step in to get down on the shot, that's when I begin to finalize my aim. Now while I'm down here, I might actually make really small adjustments if I think that I'm a little off. But what I'm not going to do is make a big adjustment like lean off to one side in order to change where I'm going to send the cue ball or where I actually have to pick up my feet and move. Because if I feel I have to do that, then I'm just going to stand up and start all over. Now one more thing I want to suggest right before you execute a shot is to take at least three practice strokes. And the reason why I emphasize on three is you want to give your body more than enough time to get in sync with what you're thinking about trying to do, especially with regards to how hard you're going to hit the cue ball. Now some players out there are actually able to do it with one or two practice strokes. I'm merely suggesting to try at least three. What I'm not going to suggest is zero practice strokes because I've seen players do that too. Don't just get down on the shot, pull the cue back and then fire. Now, after you get done lining up everything from the standing position and you've stepped into your shot and finalized your aim, take your practice strokes and on your final practice stroke, pause near the cue ball to give you one last chance to finalize your aim again. Now, with regards to how far do you pull the cue back, I think that's just in relation to how hard you're going to hit the cue ball. In other words, if you know you're going to hit the cue ball soft, you might pull back slightly. If you're going to hit the cue ball medium, you might pull halfway in between the cue ball and your bridge hand. And if you're going to hit hard, you're going to pull all the way back to your bridge hand. And your follow through is going to be in relation to that as well. A soft hit is going to have a short follow through, a medium hit is going to have a medium follow through, and a hard hit is going to have a long follow through. So now I'm going to get down, finalize my aim, take my practice strokes, pause, and then execute. And then just repeat. And the last thing I want to suggest that players should have in their pre-shot routine is chalking their cue. Now the reason why I left it to be at the end of the video is I don't think there's a specific spot in the pre-shot routine that chalking has to occur. Just as long as you're doing it before you step into and get down on the shot. Now one quick bit of advice in regards to chalking, don't just screw the chalk onto the tip of the cue. Instead, while you're looking at the tip of the cue, brush the chalk onto the tip while you're spinning the cue around. That way you can see that every layer of the tip is actually covered in chalk. And then place the chalk back onto the table, chalk side up, just to help keep the table clean, or at least keep the rails of the table clean. Now, when you put all that together, this is what my pre-shot routine typically looks like. And that's going to do it for today's lesson. Now if you happen to notice that some of these steps are not in your pre-shot routine, I'm just merely suggesting that you might want to add them. And then practice on trying to keep your pre-shot routine consistent. What you'll notice as you play this game is that your pre-shot routine might vary from shot to shot based on the difficulty of the shot. 
just like how you saw on my last shot where I only did two practice strokes instead of my suggested three practice strokes because of how easy the shot was on the three ball. So practice keeping your pre-shot routine consistent because with consistency, that does play a factor in improving your game. Now, I can't believe where we're at at this point. I've been on YouTube now for a little over a year and I just recently acquired over 50,000 subscribers, which is completely amazing to me. So amazing, in fact, that I'm gonna do another giveaway. And what I have for you today is, this brand new custom hybrid Lucasi playing cue. This is a 19 and a half ounce cue with a 12 and three quarter millimeter shaft and it comes with a Tiger Everest tip. The joint is a unilock joint, so it's really easy to take the shaft on and off. And it also has a custom leather wrap. Now I'm also gonna include in this giveaway, this small sample pack of shark marks. And if you've been following my channel, I posted about these on my community wall. They're just like reinforcement labels, only that they're color coded to a set of pool balls. That way when you're doing a drill, you just match up the color of the label to the ball and where you want it placed on the table. So that way you don't have to remember where the ball goes on the table, you just match the ball back up to the color of the label. And as long as you keep your table clean, then these labels are reusable multiple times. Now how do you win all this cool stuff? Well, it's just like all my other giveaways I've done before. Give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section below, and then make sure that your subscription list is public so that when I check your comment, I have to be able to see that you're one of my subscribers. So in the meantime, please still stay safe out there and take care of yourself, and don't forget to subscribe.